G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, late Friday evening here in Australia and the markets are down ever so slightly again. Still hanging above that $2.1 trillion mark though, but down on average 1.1% across the board. And as we can see, I mean, it's you know still a bloodbath really, but there are some things that are you know still doing all right. There's always outliers uh, and we'll see some news about some of these as well. But look, volume down. Bitcoin dominance just under 41% and gas prices still fairly high. And that's for a very basic transaction. Go and do a more complicated smart contract transaction. It's costing you a lot more than that. What we've been seeing for a while now, though, is that Bitcoin has actually done its best work over weekends of late. So has this still kind of played out similar to some of the other trends? Obviously, we had a very big dip, uh, correction, dump, whatever you want to call it. But... Bitcoin for at least probably a month or two now, maybe even longer, maybe like six weeks, has been doing its best work over weekends, which is very unusual. Normally it pumps during the week and then dumps over a weekend, like on a sort of Friday night somewhere there, uh, and then bounces back Monday morning. But Bitcoin's been doing the opposite to that. Is that going to play out again? That's going to be the question. We'll have a look at the charts very shortly. But let's have a look how the market's doing overall. We can see that there were some performers. So what's performed the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100, considering the market's down overall? Well, there we go. Lunar on an absolute tear. Tezos out of nowhere. ICX, MENA protocol, probably because it had that uh, co co collaboration with uh, Polygon Network. Uh, Cosmos, Adam doing nice. Kasama, AVEX. Harmony One, Cello, Quant, so we got some nice, look, Dot, Audius, Zill, so we got some nice moves there, but that is to be kind of expected considering the market has had a big correction. That's because a lot of money's jumping in and going, that's some good prices, that's where I want to get in. Doesn't mean we've found the bottom though, that just means there's people with money that are jumping in at the moment. Considering the market's down though, what's performed the worst in the top 100? What really hasn't fared well? There we go, Phantom, Near Protocol, Safe Moon, I mean, that just stays there. There we go, Solana uh, is starting to have a bit of a pullback. You know, just how low can this go? That is going to be the question from here because it pumped oh so hard. Uh, and again, we'll have a story coming up that might kind of say something. Not, I'm, I'm not trying to fight on Sol. Like I said, I want to get a position in it. I just can't do it at the moment. But just because the price of something goes up, doesn't necessarily mean that the actual product itself is you know as crash hot as what it might seem and again i'm not trying to fight solana at all 13 percent down 13 11 uh 10 so look some gains that you know are some losses sorry that you know would hurt a little bit but you know again depending on sort of when you bought in i mean anyone who bought in solana over a month ago I don't think they're too worried about this. If you bought in in the last sort of 24 hours, uh, day or so, yep, probably could hurt. But this could turn around and fire right back up. Or this could be the start of a very hefty correction considering it pumped so hard. We'll have to wait and see. Let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart. Now we can see we had that big sell-off. And now Bitcoin's just hovering around that kind of $46,000 mark. Again, testing old kind of resistance and support. Now, over this weekend, if we don't pump, I could see it coming down to 42,000. Not saying it's going to, I'm never offering you financial advice. I'm just saying I could see that. Now, whether it's a full candle body close or a wick and maybe even a bit more of a sort of a flash crash, we actually come down to 42,000, actually test it because we haven't ever really tested it except for kind of the day after here, but it was a wick. So it wouldn't be a bad thing if we came down, actually tested it and then went back up. But maybe we have, again, a wick that really dips down low to shake everyone out, 37,000, you know, maybe even sort of 35,000. Definitely possible, not what I'm expecting, but hey, I wasn't expecting this to do this either. So we'll have to wait and see. But again, my gut feeling says we're not this... Uh, bull market isn't over just every trick in the book is going to be played on you to get you to sell because everyone can see what's coming and again we've got some stories about that so again i think you know definitely could come down not saying it will and again maybe a flash crash a big wick to really come down and again short everyone who's probably trying to go long again because a lot of people are probably thinking oh this is the dip and they're all going to try and go long again and that's why they'll most likely be uh, another 
dip if they're you know if it's going to happen that wouldn't be surprise me but i think eventually we go up i'm just not sure when it's going to happen and again someone who's telling you they know exactly what's going to happen you know take it with a grain of salt that is still a guess no one actually knows what's going to happen unless they're such a big player that they literally have enough and can control the market then yeah whoever that person is i somehow doubt that they're telling everybody about that but maybe you've got the inside scoop if you do have an inside scoop let me know down below i'd love to know <laughs> who it is that you're talking to except for all these uh, crap ads about you know whatsapp and telegram groups i'm not interested in that uh, and i will be deleting those uh, comments when i get the time to find them so yeah i think every chance that bitcoin maybe goes down over the weekend or you know again traditionally over the weekends is when we've been getting these big pumps it goes down during the week pumps on a weekend down during the week pumps on a weekend that's what it's been doing we'll have to wait and see now some very very interesting stories nasdaq to provide price feeds for tokenized stock trades on DeFi chain all this talk about regulation and that like it is sort of happening but what this says to me is that companies can see what's coming and they are willing to take a bet and it, it's like that old saying they would rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission they can see that this is the future this is where everything's going stocks are going to be on chain they're going to be tokenized and so they are starting to make moves now even with all this regulatory fraud particularly around stocks coming uh onto the blockchain there's been a lot of talk about that synthetics network mirror protocol you know you name it sorry uh, all the fud surrounding them and even though they are synthetic asset versions of it, it's still the same with bringing actual stocks, which I think, what was it, uh, Binance did, I think, for a while, and they had to stop that. FTX is talking about doing it. And again, there's been all this stuff from the SEC and that. I honestly think that it's all just going to happen. Now, when it's going to happen, and again, this is not financial advice, this is all just personal opinion, but it's going to be based on some of these other stories, they're just going to have to regulate it, and the SEC and every other regulatory body out there is not going to want to come in and crush crypto. They really aren't. They actually can't. And when we get on to these next stories, I'll show you why. So NASDAQ, alongside, alongside FinHub and Tingo, hopefully I said that right, will be providing its price feeds to DeFi chain. Now look at this, a DeFi platform built on the Bitcoin network. Not Ethereum, not Solana, not Cardano, built on the Bitcoin network. And I think this is because the SEC does not consider Bitcoin to be a security. That is a very important sort of telltale there. I think that's why they went there because they could have gone anywhere. They could have gone over to, you know, Ethereum, Solana, uh, you know, any kind of place, but they've decided to do it on the Bitcoin network. And it's also because of another story of, that I'll bring you shortly. I believe that's also part of the reason. But Bitcoin, we all know the NASDAQ and all the big players are getting into it. I think that's why they've gone on to here as well. Uh, so here, tokenized stocks have had a shaky few months from a regulatory perspective. Oh, it certainly has. But that seemingly hasn't stopped legacy financial giants and decentralized finance advocates from inking new deals. Like I said, they're kind of going ahead and they would just rather ask for forgiveness than permission. Because if they ask for permission, it'll be no. Like Coinbase trying to do the right thing, letting the SEC know they were going to give interest. And what happened? They got, you know, sent that thing saying, oh, we'll sue you if you do it. They probably should have just gone ahead and did it and, you know, again, gone for forgiveness later. But again, time will tell. But when I go through some of these other stories, I think your opinion might start to lean the same way as mine. So India, very, very aggressive and anti-cryptocurrency eight, ten months ago. Really, they were going to ban it and it was going to the Supreme Court and all this kind of stuff. Now look how the tables have turned. India's cryptocurrency legislation will be distinct and unique, says lawmaker. We have to balance stability and growth, but we recognize how important this whole area of crypto is. Not is going to be, look at the words, how important 
it is. We go over here. Ukraine adopts law on virtual uh, assets to regulate crypto markets. This is all happening. The USA is not going to kind of want, not going to want to crush it and destroy it and overregulate it because they're going to get left behind. Other countries are going ahead without the USA. The USA wants to remain the financial, you know, kind of linchpin, kingpin, center point. Well, I don't know what the exact terminology is. Center point of the world. Crypto is where it's at. All the other countries are starting to come on board. The USA is not going to crush crypto. They really aren't. They cannot afford to. They need crypto to save the US dollar. I've been saying that before. I actually believe crypto is what will save the US dollar. Now, the law on virtual assets recognizes cryptocurrencies as intangible goods while denying them the status of legal tender. So they're not legal tender, but you can use them. It also regulates the activities and obligations of crypto businesses. This is what all the crypto play, all the crypto businesses in the United States are waiting on. They want some kind of regulation, and other countries are just moving ahead. They're not waiting for the U.S. They don't care. They know that if they get on the front foot of this, they are going to be at the financial forefront of where things are going. And so they're not waiting for the U.S. They will have the U.S. laws have to work around their laws because they're putting their laws in first now you can say the ukraine you know will the usa kind of follow them well if the ukraine have their laws india has their laws what choice and this is just a couple uh you know panama colombia uh you name it all these other countries are bringing in their crypto laws australia is currently looking at it at the moment the US is going to get on board. So yes, there's a whole lot of FUD there at the moment and everyone's getting scared and worried and we're going into a bear market because of regulation and this and that. Look at what's happening. It's just not spelling it out for you, but all the details are there. This is where we're going. I hope you can see it. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll, I like to think I'm spelling it out for you, but you know, if you're not gonna believe me, just look at these stories. Balancer Protocol reveals partnership with Wall Street bets, we spoke about. I spoke about this the other day. DeFi project, uh, Wall Street bets DAP. So again, Wall Street bets who do stocks in that predominantly are looking to bring them to the to the blockchain. This is where the space is going. Again, America is not going to want to kill this. They want to slow it down. They want to get on top of it and try and own it. They unfortunately can't. They really won't be able to. More so the SEC. It's not so much the US, but the SEC. They're going to get left behind if they don't really make a move. SEC, here we go. Sets November deadline for final decision on Vanek Bitcoin ETF. Going back to here, Bitcoin Network is where the NASDAQ and that are going to put this uh, stocks and DeFi on. Is that possibly because we might now be getting a Bitcoin ETF. Now, there's no guarantees this one will be granted. Uh, you know, there's definitely people out there who think the first one to be granted will be Grayscale's uh, Bitcoin Trust will be turned into an ETF because they have the biggest one. But Van Eck were the first one to put one through. And it says here that the US regulator, regulator on Wednesday gave itself until November 14th to approve or reject the Van Eck Bitcoin Trust. So one way or the other, they will be making a decision. They've said that they're going to make a decision. Now, I'm not sure whether they'll get up and be the first. Again, there are definitely some people out there who think the Grayscale will be the first one that will be approved. And again, we know that there's, I think, two in Canada at the moment. Uh, there's a couple in other places around the world. Again, the US, they are going to have a Bitcoin Trust. Uh, ETF, sorry. Now, again, whether it's, you know, this first one in November or not, they simply can't sit on the back foot. They are getting left behind. Three more Grayscale Trusts become SEC reporting companies. So the Grayscale Bitcoin Cash Trust, Ethereum Classic Trust and Litecoin Trust are now required to provide the SEC with financial statements and meet the requirements of the 1913-14 Securities Act. Now, this is the sad part is they're trying to fit cryptocurrencies, something totally new and revolutionary into, you know, 
old laws that were made probably a hundred or more, maybe even more years ago. We really need a new act. And again, we need people who understand cryptocurrencies to come uh, and make these laws, not trying to fit new technology inside old laws. That just doesn't work. You can take some of this stuff to create the new, you know, the new Securities Act or whatever, or the new Cryptos Act, but don't try and fit this into that. That doesn't work. That's, again, it's like trying to fit a square into a circle. Uh, it just doesn't work, or vice versa. Now, they joined Grayscale's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Digital Large Cap Fund in taking on those obligations. So again, th there's some people who are really anti-regulation. We need regulation. We just don't need every over-regulation. But we definitely need some, just so everyone knows exactly what the rules are. But I really don't like the idea of again, trying to put cryptocurrencies, make them fit into old rules and regulations that have hamstrung the nation. The old banking you know, regime that we've got, it doesn't work. It's been failing for a long time. So why would you want to take these new cryptocurrencies and fit them into a system that's broken and doesn't work? That makes no sense. Anyway, last but not least. So as I was saying before, you know, some of these chains that were pumping, so Luna, ICX, Tezos, Mina Protocol, Ava and all that. Cardano vies with Ethereum for most active developers. This is what is important. Yes, it's great that you might be invested in some project that's absolutely going to the moon, but if you don't have a lot of developers on it, then it really isn't anything more than a, a flip, really, a, a cash grab. Now, I'm not trying to throw haze at uh, any of the other projects, but Cardano and Ethereum is where the most active developers are. So it is likely that these two are going to be the one, one of the two, or one of the few that succeed. I'm not saying none of the others can, but this is where most people are developing on. So this is where you really need to focus on. I'm not saying don't go invest in other ones. Other ones are still doing uh, well and they could become behemoths, but at the moment, I mean, Ethereum's got that first uh, person, first, yeah, sort of, not person, first project mover, uh, and then Cardano not too far behind. A lot of stuff happening now. What was interesting is Ethereum and Cardano ranked first and second in terms of monthly active developers with 168 and 165 per month, respectively. Additionally, other protocols, including Avalanche, Ocean, Terra, and Cosmos, came on strong in the last year with triple digit percentage growth over the previous year. But the same report identified EOS, Bitcoin Cash and Tron as seeing large drops in developer activity. Now the prices of these are still going up, but yet less and less people are actively developing on them. So again, you know, there's a number of platforms out there and just because the pro the price is going up and some may be skyrocketing if they don't have the development they're going to have a really hard time when it gets to the bear market and again i'm not trying to say that any of the other ones can't make it but it's hype and speculation at the moment short of this this is what i focus on so if there's a lot of people developing on uh, cardano and a lot of people developing on ethereum guess where i want to have most of my money where most of the development is happening all right that's it for me Sorry for the late one, had a few things to do. Uh, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I've got a life uh, outside of this. I would love to make this uh, my full-time job, uh, my occupation as I'd say, but I just, I can't do that at the moment. All right, I'll let you go. Stay safe, be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but there definitely are some gains out there and I'll see you next time.